Welcome Tangle friends. My name is Annie Reiser. I'm a certified Zen Tangle teacher and a certified botanical illustrator. And I'd like to welcome you to another of my lunchtime tangles. Today, we're gonna to do a gridded pattern. At least I'm going to make it into a gridded pattern um, called Me Too by CZT Mini Lempert. I love this tangle pattern. It's so beautiful and versatile with what you can do. And um, it's also for me, very challenging. I know a lot of my students out there are needing a challenge right now. Um, so here you go. And um, I'm gonna try to show you how I, how I do this tangle um, that's a little different than the step out that you can get on tanglepatterns.com. Tanglepatterns.com step out looks like this. So as you can see, there's not really a grid laid down there with a string line of pencil. But I'm going to do that today. And I got that idea because when I was working this up, I almost didn't teach you this tangle because it's not one that I have actually internalized the way um, I have internalized hundreds of them and can just do off the top of my head. I really had to work up this. But I like it so much that I wanted to show you. So. I just came off of teaching Hearts Entangled, both the pink and the green, and then using this tr traditional Celtic knot, we used a grid. And I'm going to use this exact same grid template that um, we used in our class for this exercise today. So take a look at this or take a screenshot of it. What it is basically, this is actually a Zentangle tile, but it works actually almost better if you take a piece of hot press watercolor paper, 140 pound, is what I recommend, um, and cut them into nine by nine centimeter squares. Then you make a border around the um, square of one half centimeter, and then divide the remaining eight centimeters into two centimeter squares so that you get this grid. And that's what I did for mine right here. So I'm all ready to go. Um, this is going to hopefully help me keep my, um, my strokes more evenly spaced. This is hard, so don't get frustrated. Just keep practicing it. And at the end, I'm going to show you a really fun kind of more organic way to grow this tangle that you'll really love to. So here's my grid. And we're going to start out at like the center point of my first two centimeter square, and I'm just gonna make a C, which is almost like a half circle, right? In that C, I'm going to, at either end, put this little seed shape. And then I'm gonna continue on in the same fashion, but mirrored, And then again. Then we'll go back up here and starting at the line, the two centimeter line, I'm gonna mirror that. So it almost makes a little circle. There's my seed shape, and then I'm gonna take off and do another one. And they're still not perfect as you can see, but that's okay. In the scheme of things, we're gonna be doing a lot to this by the time we're finished and you can clean things up and you can tangle over the top and the shading will hide a lot of mistakes mistakes. There are no mistakes in Zentangle, right? So the next one, it's going to be mirrored and I'm going to start, how, let's see, how, yeah, I'm going to start over
And then again, we're going to go the opposite direction of the C, not a C. Um, The grid lines just basically help me land at about the same height for my seeds. And that's important because we're gonna do kind of what is gonna be a lacy weave in there. It doesn't really help me with my shape as much because I have to still do that by hand. But we're gonna go clean some of this up. I'm just gonna stop here because it's a shorter demo. Um, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to fill in these little seed shapes black. Take your time doing this and remember to keep a light touch with your pen so that you don't smash down the tip. Easy to forget when you're doing the solid coloring to keep a light touch. You can also, I'm belaboring this, I'm going to get my PN. This is a PN um, from Micron, uh, from Sakura. It's a PN black Micron pen, and it's a little bit sturdier and the ink flows a little more freely from it. You can use a one or a graphic pen as well, or a zero three or a zero five. As the numbers go up, so does the pen tip um, size. At least in the Sakuras. I know every pen company has a different sizing convention, it seems. If they just want to confuse us. You're, you could make your centimeter squares um, you could downsize this all so that they're only like one and a half or even just half, one centimeter. Um, and, and then you would just get a smaller, you know, a smaller set of, of these Me Too's. But I kind of wanted to make them large enough so that you could see what we're doing on camera. Okay, good enough. So, that's not too bad. I mean, you should have seen the ones I was making earlier today. Um, at least, like I said, these, these are lining up um, because that's what's really hard to do freehand. So now we're going to do a really, um, we're going to make this just turn into this woven band by auraing. We're going to start on the inside here top seed, and we're just going to aura i got to turn my tile so I can make it nice and comfortable for my hand. I guess that would stop there because there's a line. I just want it to look like there's a um, almost a ribbon. Turn my tile.
and we'll do one more. I just want you to see, get the idea of this weaving effect. And if you look here, I still have two more to go, actually. This one. I'm going to take your time on your lines and breathe. And you can quickly see that I'm missing one here. So I need to go from this side. Wait a second. No, wait. This side. Okay, so what I like about using the grid, it lets us keep rather wide bands in here. And I, you, you can do a little bit of a variation where, where they're closer together. And um, when we get our aura lines in, we end up putting diamond shapes in the middle like this. Um, if they're really close, they, the diamonds actually kind of work out a little bit better. But um, we're going to aura one more time. Let's really give it some drama. Let's start, I guess, here. You always start your aura line where that seed shape starts, right? That got a little thin. Point of the aura is to try to keep um, even spacing between where you started your last line and, and your next. Like that's better. These are pretty long lines. It's always hard to um, draw a long line with great consistency. It's a good practice. Of course, I'm nervous. I'm on camera and I'm demonstrating, so that adds to my inconsistencies. And there's one more. So I or I'm oaring everything twice. And you could do it three times. You could do it until you absolutely fill up the space if you'd like to. And then um, what me, or, or not me too, what um, Minnie suggests to do is make a diamond shape in these areas. So there'd probably even be a little bit more room for aura lines, but since we're limited on our time. I'm just going to just do these diamonds and you would fill them in solid. It's 
So doing the aura line part is very meditative and relaxing. It's just that first, you know, getting your first grid um, lines down, that's the challenge. I'm gonna show you in a bit that you can do other things uh, in this space. That's what I love about this pattern. You can add texture with other tangles in here. Um, you could leave it plain and then it's big and bold when you shade it, almost like silver mail or something. It's just beautiful. And we're gonna make this completely three-dimensional with our shading. And before I shade, if I were not just demoing today, I would go in and um, clean up my, gr my grid lines, but I don't wanna smear any of my ink. Sometimes the ink does smear if it's not completely dry. So I'm gonna just leave them for now and you can pretend they're not there. And we're gonna shade right over the top. So here's our Me Too, and then we're gonna take our 3B Stettler graphite pen. Oh, I forgot a couple diamonds, look at me. So there, there's this interstice that's formed. And then there would be more here. Right. And I gotta get a better pen. That one's running out. Go through these pens like water. And enjoy that coloring. I'm of course doing this really quick and dirty and I'd like you to concentrate on making your fill very saturated and black and just perfect. I just Okay, good enough. So now I'm going with my graphite and wherever you see, you see now this interlacing, right? There's like a bridge on top and there's another lace pattern going underneath. So we wanna lift those from each other by adding graphite very much like we do when we shade halibut um, or petals in, um, botanical illustration, if we want to separate petals from each other, we, we have to shade in between. Now this is, um, this is watercolor paper, so it, it's not going to blend quite as buttery as the tangle um, tile from Zentangle. So when you're blending, you want to go away from your graphite into the light of the paper. Look how that's popping. Okay. 
you know, I said that this is um, a challenging tangle for me and it might not be for you. Some people just are a lot more metered than I am. I'm, I'm much more of an organic flowing kind of tangle lover, <laughs> but I do love the look of this. And I think it's really worth my taking the time to conquer it. I know people who are very metered have a really hard time, for example, with the tangle mukha. And um, I could just draw pages and pages of mukha all day long. So that is me too. Isn't that beautiful? So three-dimensional. So now I wanted to tell you about how you can also make this um, a little bit in a different way that's kind of more organic. And you would do it like this. Um, you start with your C shape. Put your seeds in, invert, and just play around with where you go. So it's no longer straight and gridded. Um, Bring that down and this round. And you can just make this irregular, almost amoeba shape from which to, to do an organic tangle. And I have a little example here I was playing around today. It's not finished, but it'll give you an idea. So I went, I tried to go in a circle and that's a really good practice. It took me a while to even, you know, figure that out. Um, and then what Maria did, Maria Thomas did project path number 12 um, demonstration with this particular tile, uh, very similar. I mean, she did the mukas. And the whole idea was that she took this band that forms, right? And she carried it out underneath the other band so that these mukas have become totally incorporated into the into the pattern, just like this. So um, let's see if I can find another band. So we have a couple bands going on. Here's one, here's another band that I could pick up on. It's right here, right? I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna make another toodles. There you have it. So you can keep on doing that every time you have a band to um, hook up on. So that's the more organic way. Here's another way, uh, metered way, kind of more the grid pattern. Although I did not use a grid on this and you can tell, I mean, it's very irregular, my, my spacing, but still it's very beautiful and worth, you know, worth continuing on, even if you think you've made mistakes along the way. And of course, my favorite one is this one, which um, I did on the blue ink. And it's, you can definitely see that these bands were much fatter than these, 
but overall it's just it's just so beautiful in the end it doesn't matter you're 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 looking at the whole piece as one instead of um, trying to find the mistakes so i hope you've enjoyed this tangle me too and if you did i'd love for you to subscribe to my youtube channel and also if you can go on my annie's botangle alumni facebook page it's a private student facebook page where you can see a lot of the work from my classes that i'm teaching from other students and get inspired and we share tips and tricks and talk about um, how we got the effects that we got. So thank you for joining and I look forward to seeing you in another session of Lunchtime Tangles. Bye-bye.